Hi, I'm Demi. And I'm Mel. And we are the, the Mel, Mel and Demi, Demi Show. show. <laughs> <laughs> so um, today is uh, something that's really interesting and very current to what has been happening yes. around the world um, since March of this year. Yep. And uh, the topic really is about COVID. Yeah. And um, we were lucky enough to actually have someone come in and she was very, very kind and brave to do it, <laughs> to have a chat with us about COVID. Now, Dems, I know that you know a little bit more about this lovely lady as well. Yes. So lovely Ash has mm -hmm. um, experienced COVID herself. So we're just going to have a chat to her about what her experience was like. Um, you know, you hear a lot of things from different media outlets and different people and you just it would be nice to talk to someone who's actually experienced it and get some truths behind it and hear some actual facts about it. Yeah, I know I have to had I've had a covid test before. Yeah. And I needed it for work reasons and I know that you have done it as yes. well for work reasons and That's it right. wasn't pleasant. Look, it's not as bad as what people say. Yeah, it I don't is. think it's the end of the world. No, <laughs> it is not. I felt like Coca-Cola was going up my nostrils. I felt like I was getting dunked in the beach. Oh. That's what, that's what my <laughs> mind felt like. <laughs> well, we can act now talk to someone who has experienced it, has yes. gone through it. So uh, I would like to welcome Ashley. Thank you so Hi. much. <laughs> How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm good. That's good. This is really exciting because it's something that is so current and anybody who is, is listening will mm -hmm. be able yeah. to relate to it. Yep. And so tell us just a little bit about yourself. So my name's Ashley. I am a hairdresser. I'm self-employed. Lovely. And you can tell you're a hairdresser because it's yeah. perfect. Look at oh, her beautiful thank hair. You. <laughs> she also has really nice makeup on, so maybe she's oh, a part-time makeup artist. Yes, yes, I'm also a makeup artist. <laughs> <laughs> the hair is the main game though. <laughs> so so tell us, um, uh, Ash, when when was that moment uh, that everything sort of started to happen or evolve so were you were you like unwell one day and decided so I was um, actually overseas I was in Bali okay oh. and yeah I got very sick about a week after arriving in Bali mm. and I had been in and out of Ubers like their version of Uber yeah. and I was sanitizing like crazy mm. but it was also wet season over there ah. so you're like constantly sweating mm. touching your face mm. no matter how much you sanitize your hands I was just touching my yeah. face and you'd get into an Uber with someone and they'd be coughing and no. they just didn't think it existed. Yeah. And it wasn't, you couldn't buy masks anywhere here in Australia and you couldn't buy them anywhere over there. Mm. So yes, yeah, seven days after I arrived, I was sick as a dog. Oh, wow. And so yeah. what time was this of the year? This, so this was, I left Sydney on the 3rd or 4th of March. Okay, so, so the it was the beginning yeah. of so like, even came out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So yeah, so it was about, I don't know, like the 10th of March, yeah. 11th of March when I started to feel really sick. So it started with like um, sweating, mm -hmm. like extreme fever, mm -hmm. like hot one second, cold the next, body aches. It started off as a flu. Okay. Yeah. And um, it just kind of very rapidly progressed. Was there a, a point where you thought, oh, it could be COVID or you were just thinking well, it was the flu? Because it was quite new still. Yes. Actually, did it come out then though? Yes, it, it was, was out. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I remember laughing with a friend saying, ha ha, what if I get COVID while I'm on holidays? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, oh, no. I did. Yeah. <laughs> and then so after that, the, the symptoms that you experienced, did you go over to a hospital there in Bali or did you wait till you got back to Sydney? No, there's no way I would have gone to a hospital yeah. in Bali. Yeah. Um, and travel insurance didn't cover you for COVID. Okay. So I knew I didn't have enough money to financially go. And mm. if you went and presented symptoms, they just chucked you in um, a quarantine room for oh, 14 days. And yeah. I was like... I was like, if I am really sick because of my pre-existing medical conditions, I knew I had to get back to yeah. Australia. So I had a doctor come and see me in my room. Yeah. He comes in in like full hazmat suit, mm. like doesn't want to touch me. I've got the aircon blasting at 16 degrees in the room and I'm just 
a lather of sweat. Oh, wow. Like I couldn't, I could barely answer the door. And he's like, you need a COVID test. You need this, you need that. But it's 10 days to get it from Jakarta. <gasps> and I was like, fuck that. Wow. <laughs> yeah, 10, 10 days. days back in oh, March. Gosh. So it's it must have gotten faster since then. But, mm. um, yeah, so it was a 10-day wait for it to come from Jakarta. Oh. And then you would have had to, uh, by the time I would have gotten the test, I would have been potentially over it yeah because you would have been isolating yeah, and yep. possibly over it wow yeah yep. yep. so it was it was scary and I, I i was traveling solo as well Yeah, I was gonna so say, that was oh, even worse what a terrible feeling yep. to be already yep. solo Alone. but then sick yeah oh. yep 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 oh that would be so hard so then the hazmat suit man came in yep. told you to get a test and you went to like a, a medical center no 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 i was just i i, I just was like i'm not going anywhere like okay. i'm not um I'm not leaving this hotel room. Like I'd rather be in isolation than go to a hospital where they don't speak English um, and wait 10 days for a test. Like when Mm. I was coming home in like four or five days. And at that time you don't want to be running the risk of a – getting COVID as well in the hospital. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. you don't know what was exactly. going on. And, and I'd also heard at this point, so I'm, I'm like sweating that he'd taken my temperature and mm. I was like 40-something degrees, oh, like really, oh, wow. like really high temperature. And he also said that there was no air conditioning in the hospital. So oh, there was no, thank no you. way I was going yeah. to the hospital wow. with no air con. Oh, wow. How could they have no air con when there would be so many people in the hospital? I oh, don't that's know. so. Oh no, thank you. Yeah, no, no, no bueno. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then, tell me though, what do you think that with your pre-existing medical history that that had uh, weakened your immune system? Yes, one hundred percent. Yeah. To then yeah. contract the yes. the virus. Yes. So I have a history of blood clot blood clots I have a blood clotting mm-hmm. disorder um and the medication that I take which is a, a blood thinner mm-hmm. reduces your immunity ah. so my hematologist has told me that I have a weakened immune okay. system and same with all the other doctors that I've seen so I 100% think I got it because I have a weak immunity yeah. and I've also had blood clots in my lungs yeah. so okay. I've Dang, yeah, yeah. I, and so my lungs are weak mm. yeah so uh, yeah it was 100% why I got it. Wow. And in the course of those two weeks that you were isolating, what was life like? Absolutely awful. Yeah. yeah. It was really bad. Yep, really, really bad. Um, I am medicated for a mental health yep. problem yep. Yep. and I was just, it was just awful. Like it was really, really, really rough and I can't begin to imagine how people down in Victoria feel right now. Yeah, being yeah. isolated. Yeah, and, and I live alone. alone. And I live alone. Yeah. So ten yeah. times worse. Yeah. It would be hard, you know, you like not having support and then yep. knowing yep. that you can't have support. Yep. It's just so um I would say that'd be debilitating for someone yep. to not be able to just do something, you know, they normally would. Yep. Or Mum, can you come yep. over look after me? Or yep. best friend yep. or something yep. 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 like yep. that. Yep. Um do you have a partner? Was no. There, okay, so you really were just yeah. having to be yep. by yourself. Yep. My gosh, yeah. that would be so difficult. I oh. know I would definitely struggle with that. Yeah, I, I was going to say, I, you know, I struggle with mental health myself and I know it would be, so it would already be hard without it, but yeah. with it, like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah. that would be. But you're also sick. Yeah, and so that's even worse. Oh. It's ten times worse. Yeah. I remember one day my mum came and brought over food for me and she dropped it at the door and she was standing on the driveway and I was inside and I was just crying. I was like, oh. can you please come inside oh, and give no. me a hug? It's such a, yeah. yeah it was oh, awful. Like, a... yeah, it was, yeah. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it is serious. This is this is oh, like. Oh, 100%. Because you hear a lot of conspiracies yeah. behind it. Like so 5G, the re- like, and yeah, the all re- that the <laughs> rubbish. The why that I, I make a stand on that is because, for those few weeks, it was living hell for you, mm-hmm. and it was severe sweat, severe flu-like symptoms. Mm-hmm. It was not only just the physical feelings of what's happening in your yep. body, but then it also impacts the mental and emotional mm-hmm. um, seclusion. Yep. Is, is that the right word for it? Yeah. Yep. And yep. then um, tell me, because you're doing so well now, and how, how do you feel now have, coming out of it all? 
Like, I feel fine. Like, is it just I, gone back to normal? Um, I definitely have an even stronger weakness in my lungs now. Okay. Like, I feel like trying to get back into the rhythm of the gym. Like, I can walk on the treadmill for ten minutes and be totally out of breath. Okay. Oh, wow. So it, it's kind of uncomfortable still um I haven't had like when I came back to Australia I was taken to the hospital um for to be checked out and they Mm. were more concerned about me having a blood clot in my lungs they took me to hospital from the airport in a ambulance Mm. that was interesting Mm. and yeah so they checked me for blood clots in my lungs because the chest pain had gotten severe like quite severe on the flight Mm -hmm. like where I could feel like I could barely breathe and yeah so then they cleared me of blood clots like I had like the regular CT scan and everything like that and they cleared me of blood clots and let me go home Mm -hmm. my dad picked me up from the hospital and this is why it's so important about hand sanitizer gloves face masks Mm -hmm. my dad picked me up from hospital I sat in the back seat with a face mask on. Um, He had a face mask on. Mm -hmm. I we sanitized our hands, everything like that. He had gone to the airport and collected my suitcase. Yeah, and he had only used gloves to touch my suitcase because obviously I'd been touching it. Mm -hmm. He then brought the suitcase into my house with gloves on, Mm -hmm. and he um, sanitized his hands and everything like that. My dad went for a COVID test like two days later and tested negative. So my dad was in a car from Mm. RPA to Castle Hill, so what, 45 minutes? Yeah. So 45 minutes. Breathing in the same air. Breathing in the same air as a COVID positive person and did not contract it because he took appropriate precautions in wearing a face mask yep. and sanitizing his hands. Wow. So I and think, his dad pretty healthy too? Yeah, my dad's super healthy. Okay. Yep. So I think that is the most important thing is to be sanitizing your hands and wearing a face mask. Yeah. Just I the think, basic things. Yeah, yeah, and people are like, oh, I don't want to wear a face oh, mask. Yeah. But honestly, my dad could have had COVID and he's in his 60s. Yeah. It could have been way dangerous. worse for him yeah. than what it was for me. I look yeah. at it at the bright side. Don't have to worry about makeup. Yeah, don't have to worry about yeah. You know, just having a just bad some nice day. lashes. That's it. Yep. <laughs> I yep. think lots of people think that you know sanitizing. What's it going to do? Like it can't protect you, but this just shows yeah, that 100%. it actually can. Because this isn't just oh, you might be positive. You were positive, yeah. and he didn't get it. And like so I that's... wasn't allowed to leave the hospital until I got my results. Okay. Yeah, so. I had tested positive well and truly, like, and this was in the early days where they weren't doing as many tests yeah. as what they are now. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, so I was about around the 360 mark. So I was like one of the first guys. Yeah, wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow, this is exclusive. Yeah. This is exclusive today. <laughs> yeah. And then um, I guess so – where what is the next step for you or what is what was told to you that's the next step do you just go about life like normal do they say now because of what it's done and impacted the body even further that you need to go in and see your gp like what's been the repercussions honestly nothing okay i just had to test negative to be able to go back to work which i did the um symptoms probably stayed around the chest pain was the worst Mm -hmm. there was a few times where i was like do i call triple o like this is really bad Mm -hmm. because like panadol wasn't doing anything Mm. um I, it would, the, everything lasted about 14, 15 days. Okay. So okay. from the time I got it in Bali to the time, like, I was about halfway through my isolation at home and then I had, like, another six days to go before I went back to work. So yeah. best feeling ever going That's back amazing. to work. Freedom. Mm-hmm. Wow. And, and then mm-hmm. was everyone good in the workplace? No. Okay. Yeah. I, no. Did, I wouldn't have thought so. Like, no. I feel so fine you know being mm. in a space like this it's been well and truly a long time mm-hmm. and I trust that it's you been know. seven months exactly yeah. like eight months maybe even now like yeah I think you're ignorant if you're freaked out about somebody having had it yeah it's a virus it's like a super flu yeah it's nothing more than a flu like everyone gets a flu pretty much every so, year yeah um yes as soon as you return back to work and people weren't obviously probably very accepting yeah so I'm a self-employed mobile hairdresser predominantly. So I go to people's homes to do their hair. Mm. And I thought 
the best thing to do was to be quite open about having had the virus, yeah. which was a huge detriment to myself because I had so many clients cancel. Mm. I've had so many clients not come back to me. Mm. Like, and when I say so many, like probably like six to eight, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when those people get their hair done every of four course, weeks, five weeks, lot. six weeks, and it's, you know, X amount of dollars and I see them 10 times a year, yeah. like that's, that's big yeah, dollars makes a being big lost. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I had people cancelling left, right and centre and, you know, people did slowly come back and people were loyal and they didn't have their hair done, you know, because as well at the same time schools were starting to close yeah. close down so there was mm. all the homeschooling stuff. So a lot of my clients are stay-at-home mothers yeah. so mm. their kids are at school when they get their hair done. So they were not wanting to get their hair done when they're trying to homeschool. So I took a huge hit and, yeah. like, JobKeeper couldn't have come out fast enough, to be totally honest. Yeah. Yeah. It was really, really tough. Mm. So, yeah, Just I think the implication of the fact that it's not only impacted your body, emotional, yeah. mental, yeah. now your work yeah. and financial. Yeah, yeah. yeah 100%. It's been a huge hit. Yeah, mm. it's massive and I don't think people think that it's even a real thing until they meet somebody who's yeah. actually gone through it and there's not enough people in Australia that have gone through it. Mm. So I don't, I don't think that people really know how bad it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I definitely didn't like know exactly how bad it was. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, and I think that yeah, people should definitely take it more seriously. Mm, for sure. And just, how hard is it to just put on a mask and um sanitize your hands? Yeah. And just you know, do what you got to do. I still still see people in the shops that just stand on top of each other, cough yeah. everywhere. Like right. they just don't respect other people's yep. personal space and just don't abide by the rules and mm-hmm. the guidelines. Like yep. Naturally, if everybody did that, it would prevent a lot of sicknesses. Oh, yeah. 100%. Mm. But, you know, don't, don't see people socially if you're unwell, whether yeah. it's COVID or not. Like yeah. the amount of times I get sick every single winter because people have their hair done mm. and they just don't really care and then I've got to have four or five days off work and not be paid. Yeah. The one thing I have to say, though, is I suffer allergies. Yeah. That is not contagious. It's not no. something that's going to affect mm. someone. But one little sneeze now, everybody thinks that you... Which is, yes. which oh. is absolutely ridiculous because at no point did I ever sneeze. Much, that that yeah. drives I, me bonkers. I, the symptoms that I had was a fever. I had chest pain, like extreme chest pain. I had mm. a cough in the first few days and it was just like this constant aches and pains. It was mm. There was no cough, so whether that was the strain that I had was no cough um, and at no point did I sneeze or have a runny nose. Okay. Yeah, see, that's interesting, especially with the runny nose because if you call the hotline, you have a runny nose, you get tested. You have a little bit of cough, you get tested. Mm. Anything mm-hmm. you really get. Well, I guess they're just being overly precautious now. 100%. Um, which is fair enough. But, um, yeah, that's very interesting. But I found it hard too because I've got – I get a lot of sinus issues mm. and you just see people looking at you and judging you. Mm-hmm. As soon as you – like I would go to – an I had an appointment at a beautician. I was like holding in my sneeze and blocking my nose because I didn't want her to freak out. And think that i am <laughs> got COVID because yeah. she was so precautious about it. Yeah. So it's been really hard with that, I find. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it's definitely been. A but then that's ignorance as well. People haven't educated themselves is yeah. that sneezing actually doesn't have anything to do with it. It's a chest infection. Yeah. Like when you look at the overall of what COVID is because it turns into pneumonia. So mm. COVID is a chest infection. It affects the respiratory system, mm. not like the yeah. like the up, yeah. up top respiratory system. Yeah. Like yeah. it doesn't. It's all in your chest. So I don't. I think it's so stupid that people are like, no, oh, you're sneezing. Mm. It's like who cares? Sneeze away. Like, yeah, yeah. You're just going to give someone a cold, really. Yeah. yeah. You're not going to give someone COVID, mm. which people do still. You know. I don't want to sound so like a Debbie Downer, but like they can, people can still die from an influenza. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, flu. Definitely. It's just not meteorized. Like people yeah. don't know about it as much mm-hmm. because they're not going to put it in the newspaper and say, well, someone died from, from a cold and flu. Everyone would then freak out. Well, there's mm. something like every year 260,000 people die from influenza no, in the wow. world. Wow. In the world. Yeah. So right now, like, Okay, yeah, America's hit that that number, but we we're nowhere near clo- close to that. Australia's done really well. Mm. I, I think we've been able to keep numbers down pretty good. 
I do really feel for, you know, especially Melbourne, I've mm-hmm. got friends down, yeah. friends and family down there. Do you think that um, keeping these borders closed, and this is just a real personal question, mm-hmm. so no answer's wrong. It's just do you think that keeping the borders closed is a good idea? Um, I, I think from, you know, such a hot spot being Victoria and like the inner city Melbourne where they found out the reason why it got so bad was because people couldn't speak English and weren't mm-hmm. understanding. Yeah. I think, yeah, keep it closed to Victoria yeah. because they obviously they they've got a huge population down there mm-hmm. that don't quite understand the rules. And that's why I did, I tie that in with how important it is to mm. be gloving up, masking yep. and yep. sanitising. Yep. 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 So yeah, definitely. So if they just follow tiny little things yeah. like that or, yep. you know, some of the, the stories that you hear about the two young girls that travelled up to oh, yeah. Brisbane, yep. you know, I won't obviously go into that, but, you know, the fact yeah. that someone's that was just not doing the right thing yep. Yep. and then you know what can happen yeah definitely I, I think the borders being closed to Queensland though is ridiculous mm. especially like you look at all the theme parks that are up there that employ mm. thousands of people I assume <laughs> yeah um and, and I remember reading something about Australia Zoo and Terry Irwin had said before they went into lockdown she said they had enough food to feed the animals for six weeks oh, and that wow. was it oh, because gosh. finances so could you imagine something like I'm such an Aussie and I love yes, Steve Irwin. Yeah. Could you just imagine something like the Irwin Zoo being closed because of this or mm. even over in America like Disneyland being closed? I'm also a Disney fan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like could you imagine Disneyland being closed down? Like yeah. they've, they've just let go of it thousands of people so yeah. it is really bad but you know we've also got to be careful that we don't wipe out a human race um, mm. yeah. jobs and businesses that yep. are having to survive yeah you know? yeah yeah so yeah oh wow do you have any advice that you would give to <laughs> someone that is either isolating or someone whose business is affected by covid something that yeah some advice that could help them yeah um make sure you have a pet <laughs> my dog helped me so much um try and exercise and I think you know if you're really struggling lifeline is always there for you so 13 yeah. 11 14 mm. lifeline has been there for me numerous times I I've like I said earlier I've suffered with mental health problems for a long time and lifeline like I called lifeline when I was in um lockdown yeah mm quarantine whatever you want to call it um and they were really really helpful like I've called them for numerous things over the years Mm. and lifeline is honestly the most valuable thing we have in Australia like if you're feeling depressed it's okay yeah Yeah. you're going to get through it it's going to be all right because I have depression and I got through it so I think I think everyone can make that step forward and you know reach out to someone or message someone, cuddle your dog or your cat or Mm. your bird or whatever, your rat or whatever whatever furry you have, your rat. (laughs) Um, But also something like Lifeline, which is completely anonymous, can really be a huge help and it's helped me. So Yeah, that's amazing advice Mm -hmm. and I really appreciate that. You know, I I had very minimal to no understanding Mm -hmm. of it except for just doing my bit at work. Did you just think it? was going to be like the 5g was going to infect you oh no i wasn't one of those conspiracy people no, and you know everyone's each to their own whatever their opinion is but for me i i sort of think you know um that i'm pretty healthy so mm-hmm. you know you sort of think you're a little bit invincible that yep. you might not contract yep. it mm-hmm. you know, yep. and, and it, it won't get me but it, it can happen to anyone. 100%. And, and I'm just very thankful that I am younger and. Yeah, so am I. You know, that yeah. we're because not Because if I had been elderly, yeah, 30 years older, it could have been a whole different yeah, story. A whole different yep, outcome. That's it. I really, really appreciate yeah. everything that you have said and, Thanks, guys. and told us it's not that easy to talk about something no. like that, but you have really, uh, you've moved me. Yeah, you've definitely oh, moved me too. And thank you. you know, awesome. so I well, I'm glad I could be a part of it. Yeah, thank yeah. you so much thank for you. coming in. Um, 
I think, yeah, I, I, there is definitely people that you can, can talk to, that there is light at the end of the tunnel. Yes. 100%. You know, that you are back on your feet and you're yep. working and you are yep. able to be with your family and friends mm -hmm. and you now probably appreciate life more than ever. 100%. And appreciate video calls on yes. Messenger. Yes. Yes. And, all those and I thoroughly <laughs> appreciate online shopping yes. and that I don't have to sign for my deliveries anymore. <laughs> it's fantastic. Hey, just drop it and leave. And yeah. you go. It's like, thanks, Thank COVID. You. Like, I don't have to sign for my deliveries. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like a celebrity. Yeah, exactly. My postie knows me by my first name, just FYI. <laughs> really appreciate oh, it, Ashley. Thanks, guys. You have been amazing. Yes. Thank you. So, so much. And I really hope um, as well business picks up and yeah, it's more back. It's back to normal. It's pretty good. Yeah. Than ever. It's good. I'm, I'm, I'm like regretting how busy I am now. Yeah. <laughs> like so I'm just weird. I'm going to plug this blonde in your hair is, is amazing. Oh, really? I know. Oh, it's actually you. a true blonde color. Yeah, it's that. blonde. It's blonde. It's yep. beautiful. Thanks. Thank what, what perks it is to be in the hairdresser. Yeah, I know. I would it's love pretty that. good. It's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dems, I, really, I, I think this has been a, a really nice chat to have. I feel like I've learned a lot and I hope the people listening have learned a lot and know to take it a bit more seriously but also know that you can come out on the other side of it and that there is help out there for the people that need it and 100%. that's really important. Yep. And I'm more than happy to also express to chat to us if you feel like you can't chat to someone else so reach out and then we'll be able to um, you know help you further whichever which way we can definitely yeah. so just yep. to let or call know. lifeline yeah. call lifeline 13 11 14 perfect so yeah. um appreciate yeah, yeah. thanks guys thank, thank you, you. Thank you. <laughs> i'm demi and i'm mel and this was the, the mel, mel and, and demi, demi show, show.